What well, good morning, folks? It's Richard Jean, the fishing machine here. You know, folks, I simply enjoy catching catfish of all sizes, and there's nothing like hooking a few river monsters. However, when it comes to eating catfish, at least in my opinion, smaller catfish are the way to go. Today, I'm going to show y'all an easy way to catch loads, and I mean loads of eating size catfish in the summer. Now, this technique not only will load your cooler, but folks, it simply is a blast to do. What happens is during the summer, catfish gets up under these shallow docks, and the reason is is because there's a lot of shade, and there's a lot of forage under these docks, such as bluegill, shiners, and other bait fish. They have plenty to eat, plus they have a tremendous shade. All right, folks, here's just another dock. Let's skip it way back up and up and yonder. Different docks. That's what I'm doing. I'm just jumping from one dock to the next, hunting these fish. Now, this is another shallow dock. As you can see, how the vegetation is right up on the water almost. It might be, it might be two feet up under there where that bait stopped two feet of water, real shallow. This is a great pattern from late spring all the way through summer for catfish. Not just channel catfish. They'll get up under these shades uh, and they'll they'll just, well mainly channel catfish and, and bullhead. You know, catfish, they love shallow water or a lot of them will stay up shallow just like a bass. And the ones that do, they'll, they'll relate to these shades. So that's why when I skip a bait up under there, I, I skip it as far back as I can to get into the darkest part um, of the boathouse or dock that I'm fishing. Watch this, folks. Oh, no. This may not be a bullhead. I don't think it is. I believe we got us a channel cat. With this little old light rod right here. Yeah, we got a channel cat. Yep. That's okay. I was afraid of that. Yeah, look at him right there. I knew that we was going to catch both species. <laughs> I knew it. But that's fine. That's fine. Golly, that's a good one. That's a big male. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I had a hard time right there getting that fish out from under there. But both are up under here. Bullhead and channel cats. That was a heck of a battle. Heck of a battle. We'll just go ahead and net this fish. But ain't that pretty. Look at him in that clear water. I mean, look at him. He tuckered out a little quicker than what I thought he would, to be honest with y'all. Quit. The sun's starting. Oh, there he go. That's a good fish right there. Now you can see, let's get him right here and we'll look at him. See how battered up he is right there? That's from spawning. That's from spawning. And that's a male fish right there. Folks, this is a pretty doggone good male channel cat right here. I'm having to use grips because he's so strong right there. He's a male. See this old big head? The males have big heads and the females have smaller heads. Big old mouth right there. But you can see what a little bitty piece of cut bait that fish hit. And that's a size 2 Gamagatsu circle hook. And that's all it took to hold that fish. It don't take a big hook to hold catfish. These channel cats, like I said, it don't take a big bait to catch them. But that, that fish is probably five and a half, six pounds. He's a, he's a good, good sized fish. That was a battle on that little pole. But really, I, I figured he, he ran out of steam pretty quick. Uh, of course, he is battered up from spawning. Let's let him go. All right, 
folks. Wow, he's strong. <laughs> he's being strong now. Okay, I'm going to let you go. That's the best way to try to hold these fish is with a grip. I used to not <laughs> I used to not do that, but this right here is a lifesaver. What it does, it keeps from the fish getting damaged. They're, they're so strong and slimy, they're hard, hard to hold. So that right there, I get them. That's just a Walmart fish grip made by, well, it's a teen catfish fish grip. Worth the money. Okay, for a bullhead, I'm going to be using this little Fluger President reel. And uh, this Z-Man 5'4 light action Drew's uh, Ultimate Ned Rig Rod. Real light outfit right here. And I have a size 2, which this is pretty cool, folks. Right here, if you see that, that's a size 2 circle hook. 6 pound braid and a short 10 pound leader right here. Probably about a, t uh, and I have it connected with a double uni knot. So that's going to be for bullhead. If I find any, but for my channel cat, rod i've been using this and y'all been seeing it just a medium action rods and i'll have another one back there for backup 12 pound test mono with a size either one out or two out eagle claw circle hook right there made by seagar circle hook uh, you can get them at walmart and i have a palomar knot tied into that hook right there and also for these bullheads. Uh, two knots that I like to use, either a Palomar or a Snail. Both of them are very, very, very strong. This is an old reel right here. This is a Speed Lose Speed Spin Tournament Series. Ten ball bearings, extra wide spool right here. I've caught a lot of fish, all kinds of species on this reel, and I've had it for years. So can't wear it out. Ain't wore it out yet. All right, folks, let's go ahead and fillet this bluegill right here. I've run out of bait. I'm going to go ahead and fillet him up right here. And I'll show you all what I'm doing. All I'm doing is cutting strips. Now, sometimes I would prefer to do that this than cut them in cross sections. Especially if I'm using light uh, little hooks. But I'm just filleting it like you would a regular fish. All right, there's a fillet right there. That's a big fillet for a bluegill, ain't it? You talking about some good eating? But all I'm doing right here is just cutting little chunks or strips, whatever you want to call them, like this. That's all we're doing. And these long ones like this. I'll actually, actually just cut them in half like that. But you can see that makes a lot of bait right there. A lot of bait. Good catfish bait right there, folks. Now, when I fillet them like I did here, I'll go through the skin part first and then out through the meat like that. I find that it'll hold it a lot better. But y'all can see I'm not using big baits at all. And haven't been today. Let's get, I like to get down here low and see what, what I'm, and then skip it like that, like that right there. See, I got that bait way back up in there. And you know, I've been using six and a half foot rods right there, medium action. But really, to be honest with you, this seems to be a little bit easier. Uh, this, this rod here is five foot four, it's shorter, and I can control my, cast a little bit better especially when I'm in here too tight like I am right now I'm in here way too tight but that's the count of the wind that's not where I wanted it to be but uh, that's okay because I got this short rod we'll let it lay there a little bit here he goes here he goes here he goes there he is there's another one come on out of there 
y'all hearing that? That's because that water's real shallow. They're coming up to the top like that. Okay, I'm in close. I'm gonna have to push this boat out. Y'all, excuse me. My goodness, now that's a little male right here. I believe. Oh, he ain't hooked too good. He's badly hooked, but that's probably good enough. They got some tough, tough hide. It's like wet, wet leather. Come back here, fish. Golly. <sighs> tough, tough. Golly, this, this thing just now starting to fight. Mad, he's getting madder. Look here at the power of the hell. A channel cat. Pound for pound, I believe, is the hardest fighting sight, uh, catfish they are. Come here, quit. All right, we got him. Not to say that a flathead don't fight or a blue, but I'm just saying for their size. Very sporty fish. Man, uh, what happens is, is what they're, 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 they travel in wolf packs. You know, sometimes five or six in a little school. When you catch one, well, it disturbs the school and it busts them, up, busts them up and they're just liable to disperse everywhere. But hey, Sometimes you'll catch two or three under every dock. And I have hit docks where they was, see that's a whisker hook. That fish was barely, barely hooked. Okay, and that is a little male. Or not little male, just a male. Okay, get on back. Wow. Whew. My goodness. Let's see right here, folks. This dock is two feet deep. And I got that bait way up under there. If we hook a catfish up under there, we're going to have a hard time. But that's what we want. <laughs> it's a sport. Look here. We done got one on here. Got a lay bum. This is a good one. That quick, I just had pulled up here too. Now this is a dock I've never fished. I'm just gonna hold pressure on him, that's all I can do. And I hope he don't weave up in that stuff. Golly. Y'all hear him back there? Okay, he's coming this way. A lot of posts up under there. He's in one right now. He's out. Okay, he's in the clear so far. Y'all see what I'm talking about. That was a heck of a battle right there. And it still is. My goodness. Woo! My, my, my. Uh, is he going to quit? That's a big female right there. Look at her right there fighting. That fish had a lot of spunk. And I just had skipped that bait up back up in there when I was started talking to y'all. That's how quick that bite was. My goodness, and I've never fished the, these before. See, I'm just looking around for new areas. That's a good one right there. My goodness. Woo! I had a lot of... I had a time getting that fish out. Golly. That's about as sporty as you're going to get right there, folks. You know, you, you got to know there, there's just a certain amount of pressure you can put on a fish like that regardless of whether he's around a bunch of braces and 
post and all that. There's nothing you can do about that. But if you put too much pressure, he'll pop you off. Now, the last couple fish that I've caught, let's get this one out off. Golly, that's a nice one. Look at there, folks. That is a nice, nice fish right there. Wow. Last couple fish that I've caught, I've just tied directly to braid because it's fine around wood, around post. Where braid is a problem is around rocks. So I've tied a Palomar knot. Y'all excuse me. I'm all tore up. I'm excited. So when I do that straight to braid, tie a hook straight to braid, it's always with a Palomar knot. I've never had one slip out. Never. But a lot of knots will, and good knots. But man, I respect her because she gave me a fit. Let's let her go. Go on back, gal. Hard pulling thing. Whew. I'm telling y'all, this is something else. But I will retie my knot. I'm going to do that because that fish put a lot of stress on that knot. So I might as well have a fresh knot. And it don't take long to, uh, to tie a knot. All right. Whew. My goodness, that was a fast bite. I'm going to put another one back up in there and see. Now, like I said, it's two feet of water. Y'all can see. See the bottom? Very, very shallow. Very shallow. It's hot, but I don't care. This is a sport. Second to none. Did you hear the crow? Let's catch another one. And there's a bug and crows and there's... Whew. Oh man, I'm about to have an adrilogen. All right, folks, let's try that again. Okay. Right there. Could there be a third one? <laughs> there ain't but one way to find out. One way to find out, and that water is shallower. We'll just let it lay down there. I mean, there's more fish under there than just two. But uh, what, the, what the thing of it is, how bold are they? You know, they could be 10 or 12 under there. Who knows, or just four or five, but look here. I want y'all to look, 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 look. There's the third one. Now then, we're cooking with grease. Wow. It's come up to the top. I love that sound. Golly. Now this one right here ain't as big, I don't believe. But it don't make any difference. That's three fish off of this one dog. He's got tangled up in some grass. That's the reason why he can't fight. <laughs> he did for a little bit. That grass kind of messed him up. Come here, boy. Okay. Three fish off one dock. I was talking about that not long ago, how I've caught as many as six off of a dock before I have him move. These fish right here ain't spooked. They're in an active, active mood right here. Okay, quit, quit, quit. You don't do that. Look at there. It's a good one. That grass got all over him and that kept him from really fighting. It wrapped him up a little bit. A circle hook out. Okay. 
beautiful, beautiful fish. That's a little male too. I can tell his mouth is a little bit bigger than a, in his head's like, that's a small male, or a young male, teenager male. Well, folks, that's it. Four off of one dock. Let's go to the next one. I tell you what, though, that was fun while it lasted. Yeah, six is the most I've ever caught off of one dock like that, but that was close. I was going to try to beat my personal best on that, but if you think about it, that's probably going to be pretty hard to, to beat under one boathouse like that because even though they, they could be a lot more fish in that under there than that, and obviously they are, you're not going to catch every fish. But uh, what happens, they get spooked. All that thrashing. And plus, you'll release those fish and they'll go directly back up under there again. So that's what happens. They just get spooked. But let's move on up here. Now, I've never fished. I was going to fish some across the river that I used two years ago. But... Uh, I thought, well, what the heck? Let me just try some of these down through here um, and see if they're holding fish. And uh, they are, obviously. That one did. And while I'm going, I'm going to get up in the shallow water. See, I'm always, I'm going to look for some shell cracker beds. <laughs> yeah, there's some beds right there in front of us. I don't see any fish on them. And there's some more right there. I didn't see none on them. Some of these beds will have a few fish on them, some won't. Bursal's always going to have gas. Always. That's all he does is eat beans. He'll just smile and just shovel them old beans in there just as hard as he can. This one right here don't have much room, does it? but it don't make any difference. I can get that bait back up in there. And if there's one in there, I'll drag him out. This is a big boathouse right here. There's a lot of shade. So I figure there's some fish under there. Look here. Golly. Golly. I don't know about this one. <clears throat> Let me keep my rod down low. Yeah, we got him out. That one was wrapped up in something big time. Golly. It's a good fish right here. <clears throat> Man, that was difficult. I had to really watch what I was doing at that time. That's a male. Golly. He's still green as he can be. Real green. If you ever let them get their head back down like that, they'll go back down. Like that one's doing right there. Whew. Quit. Stop it. You don't, you don't do that. You're being a very, very mean baby. Let's see if we can land this fish. He'll quit. He's pretty in that in that clear water though. Well this water ain't real clear, but not right here it's not, but he's doing <laughs> it's pretty. I get so excited doing this stuff, folks, and I've done it for years. You name it, all kinds of different kinds of fishing. And I'm still I still get excited doing it. Okay. Yeah, he ain't gonna quit. He's mad. Quit. That's actually a good male. Good si quit. Okay, we got him. Finally got him. My goodness. That's not a bad size male right there, folks. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say it again. I had to watch everything that I was doing to get that fish out of there. 
uh, when I first stuck the fish, quit. He was wrapped up in something. I don't know what it was. Probably a post. He probably went around the post. And uh, I didn't think I, I couldn't. I couldn't move the fish. I mean, I didn't think I was ever going to get him to to come my way, to turn his head my way. There's just so much pressure you can put on that light line, but that's a good fish right there. A lot of fun, powerful. Let's get him back. Let's get that fish back quick as possible. Okay. We at? All right, you're loosed. Well, I'm trying to get you loosed. You know, folks, not only was that a lot of fun, it was a blessing to be out here. Another thing is, this is, like I've mentioned before, a terrific pattern. You can pattern catfish, you can pattern crappie, bluegill, shellcracker, smallmouth, spotted bass, largemouth, stripers, um, a white bass, uh, gar, you just name it. You can pattern these fish all year long. And you can fish in a high percentage ways and just, and just be exhausted, just like I am right now. I don't know how many fish. We can just show so many, but I probably caught over a hundred pounds of catfish today on this little rod right here. Just a simple little deal. A little piece of cut bluegill, small circle hook, little bitty reel, short rod. That's a lot of fish to be catching up under a dock, but this is a pattern that will, like I said, stand pr pretty proud all summer long. Uh, especially weedy lakes that have channel catfish. Weedy lakes and uh, docks that are set up in shallow water, uh, two, two to three feet, four max. It will work. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. I appreciate everything that y'all have done for this channel. This channel is growing. It's continuing to grow. It's non-stop. And it's all because of y'all. Thank y'all for listening to my opinions about the sport of fishing. Hey. Luke Skywalker. Hey man, whoa. The energy burst. The energy burst. Hey. And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good food.